acceptance of the report. So could I have a motion? Oh, okay. It's not to raise anything. It's just the report. That's it's it. just the report. We're, item number four is the discussion. I was checking, making sure. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the discussion. They're trying to trick me. <laughs> acceptance of the report is what we're voting on. Motion to accept the report. Second. So, can I have a motion? Motion for second. Second. And a second. Give your further discussion on the report. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? There being none. So now we're ready, Mr. Higgins, to go to number four. Sure. The, uh, well, I'm certainly happy to uh, kick that off. I don't know uh, if we're going to be want to have uh, further discussion or more questions with the actual RD, but as you've heard, he's recommended uh, raising the employer contribution rate to 22.4% uh, according to the funding policy. Uh, as background, Kyle, I would discuss last time, that's estimated to bring additional approximately $345 million into the system. Of that, for the state-supported entities, such as uh, state agency, K-12, universities, et cetera, that's estimated around $265 million. Of course, the remainder will be uh, at the, the local and county level. And one little key part I'll mention on the state share, I think it's important to keep in mind also that, um, that only around, some, by the of some of our estimates, only a little under a third would come from the general fund. Now that's just an estimate, it's from, uh, I say that citing a project from a couple years ago that we did, because we don't have all of that information. We, we know the first contributions, but then we don't have all the access and we have to work with others on that. But it's something we did do previously it seemed that, uh, like I said, a little over a third was coming from the uh, state general fund. And, uh, you know, some of the budget officers may say that sounds a little low, and it may be. But I think the point, uh, the main theme there is it's still a good one. In fact, that a lot of the actual dollars for this would come from other funding sources. And think about that makes sense to you. You've got public schools have a lot of other funding sources, and they're our largest active contributor as far as membership. Um, Universities have uh, other fund sources. One of the largest employers of the university hospital, I'm sure, has other fund sources. And even some of the larger state agencies, you've got uh, human services, Department of Mental Health, Department of Transportation. So that seems, seems logical. But again, he's recommended 22.4%, uh, 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 estimated $345 million in the state share, uh, estimated $265 million, a lot of which would come from other fund sources. And I may have some other comments later, but I'll pause, pause there for now. Okay, so now we're ready to discuss the ASPAR vote that we go with the 22.4%. This chair, yeah. if this is sent across the street to the legislative body, if they don't take it up or they don't know what it is, what happens? Well, the the way the statute and the Constitution, is my understanding, is that this will occur. This money will come to us. Now, the, uh, the, how they choose to fund it would be the legislature's um, priority or the, 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 that would be their decision at that point. But the only choice only thing that we can do as a board that we have an option of doing is raising the contribution rate to offset any of the projections that the actuary has given to us. That's the only thing that we have authorization as a board to do. We don't have any other authorization to do anything. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I'll, I'll kick off the discussions. I'm pretty sure we have a lot to say, but I, I have a lot of problems with raising it to 22.4, mainly because the state will be on the hook for about $264 million. The state can figure out what to do about that. My main problem is the counties are going to be on the hook, and I have a list here from you. Eight hospitals I'll be on the list, several libraries, housing authorities that will be on the list, and actually on these local hospitals, one's already in delinquency at 17.4. Now we're going to make them pay 5% more of that? I mean, so these counties are going to have to raise property tax. That's how they're going to pay for it. And some, that, I, don't, I don't know if they can afford these property taxes. And then what concerns me, and I, didn't, I, I started thinking about this, and I was only joking about going to 100, but 
the, the problem is, is that we're going to keep raising employer contributions to where it is unaffordable for these counties to pay this. And we're hoping, hoping that our returns next year will be good. I mean, we listened to the people yesterday. They didn't say our investment. I mean, they're, they're not quite sure where the market's going to go. And then in, tw in 25 years, if I did my math correctly, who knows what the market's going to do by 2047. So having to raise the employer contribution to 22 uh, it's just it's unaffordable for these counties. And there are so many plans, so many options, there are a plethora of options on the table that we need to explore as a board that will fix this problem. I think will fix this problem. I think there are other on this board that agree with me that will fix this problem. That we just have to explore and kick the can down the road and stop it. Mr. Chairman, the only thing I will, will, will throw out for that effect is, is and, and I concur, I think we're getting at some point, we're getting to the point where we're, where I don't know what the max is that anybody can afford to pay for employer cost. However, at this point, my feeling, I'm a fiduciary for this fund, and I am responsible for the fund and I, you know, I will have to go back and talk to my board of supervisors about how we would fund 5%. But that is, that's where I'm going to come from. And I would even say, let's not wait. I would want the bonus to wait a year. But looking at, at where we're at zero now, you recommended it two years. I would say October 1 of 23 rather than July of 24, which gives cities and counties an opportunity to get it in the budget, which for, for whatever is going to happen. Because the county's going to be in the same shape as the legislature. You either come up with new money for it or you cut somewhere to fund the city's going to be the same way. However, I think my responsibility at this point is to the fund. And, and as much as I'm concerned about what the taxpayers, what the others would do, if I don't follow the fiduciary responsibility I have to this fund, I would be remiss. And I also think we need to point out, too, that even though it's not a as much of a factor in, in the in funding policy. This fund produces $3 billion a year into Mississippi's, as I, last study I saw, 90 to 92% of it stays in Mississippi. That's all correct. That this fund produces $3 billion into this economy. If something happens that that's not out there, and, and the, as, as you stated, the average benefit is $28,000. These people not receiving that $28,000 benefit would more than likely be on some other form of state <coughs> subsistence. Uh, so again, all part is what I think is my fiduciary duty to the fund. And at an appropriate time, I would make a motion we go to 22 forward, effective October 1. We will hold that motion <laughs> until we finish the discussion right here. Yeah. One other thing, uh, and this page it says it would begin July, 20, uh, July 1st, 2024, so when would it Yes, uh, the July 1st, it has been, I'm not going to say tradition, but we have in the past, once we have voted, we have moved that eight, uh, 18 months away. But that is not set in statute. Uh, that is our prerogative as the board where, where we set that. And the last recommendation, we were in the middle of that 30% year also, so that kind of that was part of what wanting to hold up because we were getting to the 30%. Now, let me 30%. clarify that with legal. That, that, is, that is the board's prerogative to set the date of the uh, implementation as well? It is. That's left to the board, in my understanding and opinion, and, uh, and you've described the circumstance very well. Uh, it's just been the recent past practice. And it is outlined in the funding policy, I believe, you can go to 18 months out or the, the subsequent fiscal year. But that's not in statute. That was designed by the board, and all the administration of it is, is delegated to the board. Do you have any experience or anything in the report that would take into account any potential changes to the number of employees that a large increase like this could cause, particularly if it's an October? <coughs> deadline or, or July of 24 deadline? Well, it would, the trend line right now on employees, as, as I remember, since 2017, there's been the 5,000 numbers of employees that are lost. Uh, I'm familiar with that. Is, is there anything in your report that we need consideration of what a further increase? 
So, so for example, if you increase it to 100 percent, you would think that the number of employees would have to change because the state's not going to come up with 100 percent probably in one year. And so I, that was just my question. It, it, this is a four or five percent increase. Is there anything in your report that takes into account that, that could possibly affect the number of employees? Oh, that I got you. So municipalities would have to make cut, would perhaps cut government. <clears throat> no. No, our projections for the baseline projections uh, assume that um, the 144,416 will continue for the length of the projection period. So eventually, if we raised it to, to so we're at 24, let's say we go to 24, then in four years we raise it another. Because it seems like the trend is every four years. I mean, the state or city would start having to let people go. I mean, because it would become unaffordable, right, Chris? It's not, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure. I was just curious if yeah. the report I mean, actually had anything. Definitely sitting with other counties with it, because, I mean, you can only raise property tax so high. <clears throat> and doesn't slide 45 show a little bit of that? Yeah, this, this just shows a little bit of what uh, a half a percent each year. So, uh, now you're going to make me do math in my head. <coughs> half a percent of 144, you know, um, you're looking at. Seven hundred seven. Seven thousand seven hundred or seven thousand. Seven hundred each year. Yeah. Where's the list? Seven hundred and seven thousand seven hundred and seven
We will not be in the green next year. We'll be in something, some other color, probably. When you come back. <coughs> but what are the triggers that if we have two wonderful years of, of returns to reduce the amount or have for us to have the ability to reduce uh, a uh, increase that we might put on today? I didn't think we'd ever get there. But no, um, I think for the, for the decreases in the contribution rates, your, the projections have to be. Um, what page are you on in the opinion? Uh, yeah, you were probably looking for the funding policy. Yeah, we're nowhere close to it. I do know there was when some research in the hypothetical of what investment returns would be required this year to eliminate the rate increase. I think it estimated to be over 30%. But I don't know if that's exactly what you're asking. Yeah, but, but in order to stay out of. If, if no contribution increases voted on in order to get back to a, a yellow, not a red status, yeah, the return would have to be 30, a little over 30% for the fiscal year we're currently in for the 23 valuation. Yeah. Now, in order to trigger is, so what are you asking? What would be the trigger to decrease it back down? Yes. So, our how do you actuarially treat that? That's what so, I'm trying to come Yeah. To. So no, I, that's a great question. So we would rather it stay where it is until the fund reaches 100 percent funded on a valuation basis. I don't want to, even if you show projections going up. I'd rather it decrease once we get to 100% funded. That is the ultimate goal. That's the number one goal of your funding policy is to have a funded ratio of 100%. I would be remiss if I didn't kind of keep you on that track until we get there, then we can lower it. Now, if we get closer, now, a valuation basis, not a projection basis. On a valuation basis, if we, we're at 61%, if that starts coming up towards 90, then we can start looking at maybe phasing it down. But I wouldn't be doing, I wouldn't recommend anything until we get to that point. Would yeah, it be accurate to predict that that's more likely to happen at that cresting in 2035? Said it would be before correct. Yeah. Sure. There's also some language in the statute that says something to the effect by the board shall reduce it, but it talks about when it is actuarial sound being certified by the actuary, which I guess he just described how he would do it, and I think it puts a limit on the amortization period as well. So there's some additional information. We're not even close to that, but so I know we tie this into the session, so if you don't <coughs> note that I guess the next opportunity we'll have would be well, it'd be February or any special call meeting to get a jacket to get an appropriation. Yeah, 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 right. yeah. Oh, oh, so yeah. 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 that's what I'm saying. So it's got to be now or February, if yeah. I, I think, uh, to if for the legislature to look at the appropriation. So if we if we both know that we have a zero percent return, what are we looking at next year? Is it possible? While he's looking that up, I will mention, as you know, one thing I think it's important to remember. While nobody can predict the future exactly, but I think it's generally it's safe to say that the you know, longer, you, longer you wait, the more it's going to cost you later. And we've kind of seen that because, you know, a couple of years ago it was recommended to be 19%. Now, I understand why we didn't do it, but it's 19%. And then last time around it was a little bit higher and now we're going to. So. And if I'm not mistaken, and I, I mentioned that to you earlier, 1999, the cost of those benefits was 10% payroll. That's what I understand. And, I, I, and, and we're just now there. We're, in fact, not there yet. For what those costs should have been, what the fund, what the employer cost should have been in 1999, <coughs> those changes. Yeah, I've definitely heard you mention that before. <coughs> that, let me follow up on Chris's uh, statement. Uh, to, to delay this to after February 1, and 
enter to some interchange with legislative leadership that may have other alternatives that could be considered. Is that a possibility? Or are we into a dangerous situation now with any further delay? I'm, I'm asking that as a question. From my perspective, my perspective is that, that if we delay a vote, are, are we putting ourselves in a position that we're violating our fiduciary responsibility of, of going getting our funding policy back to green. If we delay it, I think we're delaying right now the inevitable because we're looking at a 0% return this year. And I think as uh, Mr. Freeland said, if we wait, it's going to be even a higher amount. So the question that I think that you're asking or I perceive that you're asking, are there things that the legislature can do? Well, yes, there is. They control everything other than the employer contribution. This is the only thing that we can do if the legislature choose to give us the power to do other things, then yes, maybe so. But I think that it's still going to be me uh, sense of funding right now to try to keep that liability from growing. Tinkering with benefits in any way is strictly a board responsibility, not a legislative responsibility. It is a legislative responsibility. In other words, they tell us what benefits and then we'll figure out a way to fund it. That's, that is it. Yeah. If, I, if I may interrupt, uh, I used to say I was a Youngest, newest person on this board. I can no longer say that, so I used to blame all of my shortcomings of being the newest person on the board. Uh, my personal opinion, uh, and I think people's opinions could vary, that if you do put on your fiduciary hat, that it's, it's a little more than just coming up with a number at the end of the year to tell the legislature this is what we need to fund the thing. Because we come to these meetings and we hear the challenges of the plan. Uh, I've heard some things today that make me think the challenges of the plan are not going away by increasing a rate to 22 or whatever percent we end up voting on here today. Uh, I think as fiduciaries, if you have a longer range vision of the plan, then you've got an obligation to sit down and meet as a group and come up with some options that make the plan sustainable long term. And I think putting our heads in the sand and ignoring the potential things that could go wrong next year as well and just say, oh, we'll ask for more money because that's all we can do. That's not wearing your fiduciary hat. I believe we have an obligation to go to the legislature and say, hey, this thing sticks perfectly, 22 whatever percent will take care of it, or we have an obligation to go to them and say, hey, this is not working. And here's working with our actuaries that we hired, working with our investment people. Here are some ways that we can make this thing sustainable. When was the last time we presented well, uh, formally, we've not presented to the legislature. Uh, we've had a great deal of discussion with the board, and I'd like to comment further on that. I, I remember before we had a white paper or something like that. Oh, there, there was a stable plan back in 2016 or 2017, and we've certainly had workshops. Did you have choices? Did you have a choice of a plethora of options? I mean, I think, I mean, I don't know, I can speak for the legislature, but the people I've talked to over there, I mean, I think there is an appetite for them to a, you know, a change to see. I mean, I think Chris raises a valid point. Either you go to them and say 22 4 fixes it and we're good to go, and never going to raise it again until we find something else, or, you know, <clears throat> what's going to happen? I mean, what's your next plan? But if I'm correct, I mean, like I said, it's $264 million, uh, and the state doesn't have to fund it, if I'm correct. I mean, I think they have not, they, they can say no. And then we have to find it for the Treasury or Department of Revenue. We have to find it within our own budgets to, to, that it's given to us by the legislature to fund it. So, I mean, that raises a massive problem, going back to what Chris said earlier. I mean, you will have people that we may have to lay off, and that is a denial of government services to me. This is a massive problem that we need to look at other options here. What was the head? Are we looking somewhere down the road to say this plan doesn't work and we need to look at some of the different plan options? Is that what we're 
saying? I have not heard anything today to make me think that the challenges that the plan has encountered over the last several years are being done away with because you raise the rate again within four years. And I don't think that's what our actuary is saying because we can't really predict the future. And so my concern is that we raise the rate this year, we have a zero or negative return, and we're looking at the same yellow and potentially red signals next year. And we're still saying, well, let's just raise the rate. That's all that we can do. And I, I was not here in 2016, so I didn't, I didn't know we had done a white paper. I assume we communicated that across the street. As a newcomer on the board, I felt an obligation that we not stop that just because we have done it in the past. And, um, and I, I would think that would be something we would continually update and take to the legislature. So that that's part of our tools that we take it over there. Say, hey, we told you ways that you could do this other than just giving another 5% every couple of years. And so uh, that, that's my, my newcomer excuse, not knowing that we did that. Can I reiterate, Ray, that plan needs to be updated? It's not an annual, it's a lot of information as an annual thing, but if it's every three years or more, I would just, you know, suggest that. The concepts wouldn't change. That would just be the. Yeah, we, the had, some, we had some really good discussions about some potential options, probably a year ago, and I thought some of them were some really good discussions. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. 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 Yeah, that's what doing what we figured we were going to have to do last year, uh, and we're going to be doing it again in a couple of years, probably, unless, you know, unless we just have wonderful investment returns and we continue not to see a downward trend in state employees. Uh, I, I can see us back here in three or four years doing the same thing uh, that we're doing today. And, and so I would feel better if we were able to take something other than just a number to the legislature say, hey, we need 100 million more in general fund for however much it is. Mr. Uh, uh, you want to speak? Yeah, please. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'll just wait for uh, So it's a great point. It's a great discussion. From my standpoint, great point is great discussion. And a lot of good, you know, and I don't know that I disagree with any of it. I think I agree with all of it. Of course, the challenge is pulling that all together. And uh, from my standpoint, um, you know, I'm very sympathetic to the concerns around the increased costs. I certainly respect that and see that. but. Realizing we are fiduciaries, I think we, we are left with basically no choice other than to raise the employer contribution rate at this point uh, as fiduciaries. Um, so I do think, I do recommend the rate be raised. Now I think you can have some discussion about how and when, but I, but I do recommend that. Of course, the October suggestion has been made, so we can support that for, for a variety of reasons. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. But on the other side, I also think that we should move forward with a new tier five for future employees hired at some point in the future. And whether that's this session or next session, I could again that could be discussed as well. Uh, there's also a contingency option we could use. I don't think that's necessary now, but we we embedded that before. But for now, while I do recommend, uh, unfortunately, with I think at this point we can't avoid it, uh, raising the contribution rate, I do think we should uh, continue our work with the tier five for future employees. I think that speaks to some of what you're stating or alluding to. Same thing with Mr. Freeland. Uh, and we can update the old state of the plan. We have to do that. Certainly, we'll be responsive to anything the board asks for. But I'll take it one step further. I think we need to reach a consensus when the time right, whether that's now, this session, or next session. But I think we need to reach a consensus and have a recommendation. It's my belief and understanding from uh, legislative leadership and others, as a key staff and leadership, that, that they would want a recommendation from the board, as you alluded to, we talk about that when we visit at the proper time. But, uh, that's what I would recommend at this point. As you've all stated, uh, the only realistic lever at the moment is the employer contribution rate. So I do think that uh, uh, it needs to be increased. We certainly can discuss how and when. That's not to disagree with any of the key points because they're all very important. I think we have them. And I'd be happy to answer your questions or talk further on them. Chris, I believe, as you say, that we need the option. We need to write on paper where the money is. I mean, it, it's, in, it's in benefits that are paying out. That's, that's what I see here. But that has just as big of an impact, in my opinion, if those are addressed in some manner as employees that may be reduced. I mean, that, that, weighing, weighing those two things, the impact, significant impact on both those sides, 
and, and I, I agree with you. And, and quite honestly, I, I think that it is, it is uh, time for the board because the legislature may take whatever we vote on today and say, this is it. It's not sustainable if we do any more. If the board doesn't bring us options, we're gonna we're gonna take it in our hand to do so. I personally think that that needs to be probably. I don't know whether we'll just do it as a work session to do that, but have slices of this thing so that it can. We would know precisely what we have and have it committed to paper so that we can look at it and we can see it and try to determine the impact of this $3 billion that goes into the economy every year. So that's that's the issue. I agree with you there. We have another issue before this committee right now. We have a recommendation from the actuary that we go to 22.4% uh, on the contribution rate. Is there any more discussion at this time that other board members or any board members would like to make? Yes. I think I would, I would defer to our legislative colleagues, but I would make the assumption that there is no option that might be taken by the legislature this session that would have any fiscal impact on the plan that would obviate the need for this rate increase. Is that correct? I think I can answer that. I'm not without a recommendation. Yeah. And it's selection year and all, all that stuff. Yeah. So just in the context of considering the timing of this and how it's important for us to do it now, okay. we shouldn't wait on it. And if there were, we can rescind. Well, I guess that's the question. If there were something that came forth during the time frame, if, 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 if Chairman wanted to, to send over half a million dollars uh, a bi billion would be better. better, but if you want to send over <laughs> half a billion or a billion, we could come we, uh, through the appropriation process. We could come back and make. Uh, you know, that sounds good, but that's the old the adage we've been fighting for about five, ten, well, about six, seven years, not using one-time money for reoccurring expense. You start doing that kind of one-time money, we got problems. But, I don't know where we're going to get it. Well, we do have marijuana coming on for but it ain't going to be that strong. Well, and John, uh, <laughs> that actually hurts my credit rating, too. One-time payments, it is a constant note from all the rating agencies that one-time payment is a problem. And, and I would go back to the white paper also. The white paper gives some good options. And again, the numbers would have changed. But some of the problem with those options are that not only would you take legislative action also probably require litigation over an extended period of time. But well, we did hear some pretty decent options yes. discussed. And now, a tier five tiers. A, 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 a new tier, tier is not one of those. A new tier is a, is that a, seems to be a pretty easy thing that we could recommend this year, and that would actually affect the valuation. That's not something that would be done in a vacuum, but if we were able to present that type of option to the legislature and they were to take it up, uh, the, the, the bill introduction deadline is the first, second week of January, so we have time to have a bill introduced. Uh, so that is, that option is not off the table for this group to make their recommendation to the legislature, and that would absolutely affect the population. <coughs> I, I would I agree with you. And tier four apparently worked a lot faster than we anticipated. Tier, tier four is 11 years. That was faster than the original anticipation that it actually had an impact. To me, the tier five question really is just a matter of what's the preference. Is it this session or next session? I think we could do it either works already underway and have those numbers. Uh, also, you know, the, the leadership as they deem appropriate, I'm sure they could even modify some of the deadlines. I'm not speaking on one of those, but I'm sure that they probably even additional time if needed. To your question, um, I would say, I don't know what our formal legislative reps uh, would say, but uh, in my recent contacts and still ongoing research, I would say to the concept of a potential uh, legislative change in this upcoming session, I think that may not necessarily be off the table as long as it's a recommendation from the board. Uh, but that's the little feedback I had to your other question. Do I have a motion? I would move that we raise the 
Employer contribution rates, 22.4%, effective October 1, 2023. October 1, 2023? Yes, sir. We have a motion on the floor to raise the contribution rate to 22.4, effective October 1, 2023. Do I hear a second? in a second. Any further discussion? This may uh, need to be a raise of a hand so that the secretary may can record this. So all those in favor of raising the contribution rate as per the recommendation, if you would raise your hand so the recording secretary can get that. Give me a sign. And him. Okay. I showed Sam, did you see Chris Howard crazy? I, I yeah, just saw him. <laughs> All those opposed for the like sign.